everyone. Today, this week is a little bit different because um, we are making morning bones, which I'm super excited about. Happy Mother's Day if, you, if you're tuning in the day this was released. Um, two reasons. One, it's Mother's Day, so I wasn't going to go live today. But two, morning buns take a massive amount of patience, um, but not that much work. So we'll be doing uh, a lot of waiting together. So I thought today was the perfect day um, to speed things up so that we all have morning buns by the end of it. Now it's a waiting in three steps. Um, we're gonna make the dough, it'll mix for a little bit and then it'll rest at room temperature for an hour and then we're gonna throw it into the fridge. First we're gonna punch it down. Then we're gonna throw it into the fridge and that's the part where you can let it sit for an hour or you can let it sit overnight. I will be letting it sit overnight so I'll be tuning in with all of you uh, tomorrow morning in my jammies. Um, and then after we actually make the rolls, we're going to let them sit one more time to proof at room temperature before popping them in the oven for a really quick bake. Uh, and then we all get morning rolls tomorrow. Um, so to start, you're going to get your yeast in if you're fortunate enough to have yeast. A lot of places around here have actually um, been selling yeast, you know, large scale restaurant operations. So if you can find a place near you that sells yeast, that's wonderful. Uh, so you need warm water, not too hot, so it kills the yeast, but you want it to activate the yeast. Um, and it's two tablespoons warm water and three tablespoons granulated sugar. And then we're going to add in the yeast as well. And yeast eats sugar, so that's one reason it's a good idea to put it all together. Sprinkle the yeast in, and you're just going to let this sit. You're just going to let this sit until it begins to look foamy and bubbly. And the yeast will stick to the sides when you mix, but I like to make sure that it's evenly distributed with the sugar. Alright, let this sit until it's foamy. While that sits, you can get together some of the rest of your ingredients, your bread flour, all-purpose flour, whatever you're using. You can use all of one or the other. Get your salt with that and um, your lemon zest if you're using that today, which I am. I put it all in one bowl. It's all going to go in at once. Now that the yeast is ready, um, you're going to need a dough hook attachment today or you're going to get some muscle today um, if you're doing it by hand. And we're going to put our bowl onto a stand mixer and we're going to add all of the rest of the ingredients at once. You can do it just a little bit slowly to avoid a large scale mess. Um, but otherwise, there's no real technique here. It is a dough hook, so it shouldn't create a terrible mess. And this is all of our flour, our salt, our zest, and after this I'm going to add in the eggs. And so if yours is looking like it needs some liquid, that's coming right next. And this isn't actually very much, so you can probably add it in all before you ever start mixing. Okay, three eggs today. There we go. And this is a beautiful part because you're gonna let this sit for five minutes. Super easy. What you're looking for here is for the dough to pull away from the sides of the bowl. And it might look like it's happening. Give it just a little bit more time to make sure it's coming together. We've got three more minutes over here. All right, it's been going five minutes. It's pulling away from the sides of the bowl. And now we're gonna add the room temperature butter. Um, it's, I wrote cubed, it doesn't have to be cubed. I just have mine sort of spread in this bowl. Um, I weighed mine out to three ounces is six tablespoons. And you can do that too. And we're just gonna drop it in one little bit at a time. Um, and it's gonna be for another five minutes after this. Uh, and what we're looking for after all the butter is incorporated is for it to be really silky, but it's going to be sticky. So don't worry about that. Let's get started. As you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're letting them incorporate along the way. We're not throwing all of this in at once. All right, now that that is all in, another five minutes. 
maybe you go watch a five minute YouTube video or you paste in your kitchen. No judgment. okay that's it now what you're looking for is for it to be silky smooth oh look at that and it is a, a fairly wet dough I do have quite a bit of dough on the sides of my bowl and so I'm just going to scrape those down after cleaning off my hook and if your dough is wet that's totally fine this actually will get refrigerated in a bit but for now, we're going to leave it at room temperature to rise. If you have a specific warm spot, you don't need to heat anything for this. Um, but you do want it to be warm on a hot day like today. Everywhere is warm. So I'm just going to be leaving this in the kitchen and cover it with, you can use butter. I'm just using spray to make it easy. A greased plastic wrap. And this is really just in case it rises so much that it hits the top of your bowl and you don't want it sticking to anything. So I'm covering my whole bowl with greased plastic wrap and then we wait more. One hour at room temperature. Then we get to get aggressive. My dough has about doubled in size. Keep your plastic wrap. We actually, we're just gonna put it right back on. Um, I recommend greased pans for this. Um, I just do a few sprays of that and rub it in like lotion uh, because we're gonna punch down our dough right now. We want uh, to get rid of a lot of the air pockets that have formed and then let it rest to reform. So you can just use your fist or your hand, however you're feeling. And it's really wet dough, that's why I recommend um, greased hands there we go and it'll fall that's what we're looking for for it to fall okay now we're gonna cover it back up put it in the fridge uh, one hour minimum of one hour I'm gonna leave it in there overnight and then uh, form our actual morning rolls in the morning I'll see you then good morning everyone day two we're here uh, I've just pulled my dough out of the refrigerator and it looks wonderful. It should have risen more overnight. If it did, that's, that's perfect. That's what we're looking for. Um, before you pull it out, first I recommend getting out a cupcake pan. And technically this makes 10 morning buns. You can go for 12, you can go for eight. Um, they'll just be bigger or smaller. And we'll decide that in the cutting portion. Um, but grease, heavily grease with butter. Um, 10 or whatever you're using cupcake tins and then you want to coat them in granulated sugar as well um, and then at the end of this we're actually going to uh, coat them in butter and then backwards granulated sugar at the end so there's a lot of butter and sugar in this and that's what makes them so delicious now get your dough out you want a because this is a wet dough you want a fairly well floured surface and you're looking for an 18 by 9 inch rectangle and that'll be 18 inches long 18 inches across in front of you and 9 inches high and you want to keep the dough as even as possible and so I actually like to even it out first because your morning buns will come out all different sizes if your roll is off at all and it's gonna be a little off and that's absolutely okay I recommend um, pressing your rolling pin in opposite corners like that and it helps it actually roll. Don't forget to keep moving the dough around as you go. That keeps it from sticking if you're really aware the whole time. Okay. Now I do recommend measuring if you don't have a rule, if you don't have anything to measure with, you can just eyeball it. Basically you're looking for a ratio of two across to one high. 
I'm gonna get my ruler out, see how I'm doing. I'm just over nine inches, which is fine. And I've got a few inches to go across. Another way to do this is to uh, know how big your surface is. That, that can make it easier too. I have a little bit of stickage right here. Okay. Again, you want this to be as even as possible so your buns come out as even as possible. Excellent, let's see. What I, I just indent the dough at the 12 mark and then measure from there. Perfect. And it shrunk a little up and down on the right side. And you've got it. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, spread the rest of that butter across our surface here. And you want to leave a little bit of room at the top. And this is just so the filling adheres. But again, this is going to take another hour rest before we ever bake it. It'll rise a little bit in that time. I am not really using measured out butter. I just want to make sure I leave a quarter inch at the top and it covers every inch of our dough. You might have a problem area, that's okay. For the filling, you can do anything that you want. I'm actually going a little off the rails. I have my brown sugar, um, granulated sugar and salt together. And then I'm gonna throw some, I've never done this before, throw some fresh blueberries on top. So I'm omitting the cinnamon today. Um, I'm omitting any sort of a classic is orange scented. So if you throw in some orange zest, get your filling on top and then you can just spread it back in. And it'll be thin and it's, it's supposed to be thin. The filling is not supposed to be super hearty. The fillings I make for cinnamon rolls are typically um, a lot heartier, but those are, you know, gooey. I don't think morning buns are supposed to be gooey. They're supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to eat them by hand. Excellent. I've got quartered blueberries. Whatever you try, I want to know, let me know. You can always use a hashtag Burr Bake Along or just um, shoot me a DM or contact us through the site. All right. Now that the filling set, one thing that is important is to get a little bit of water. I'm using a pastry brush because it's easier. Just dab it across the top. This is our seal. Okay, and then start rolling. Your first edge might not be great, totally fine. You can make this on parchment and roll it up like that. I, don't, I actually don't like to do that. Um, but if you're if you're better at rolling that way, do that. Now you'll notice these will be pretty tall and we have muffin tins that are fairly deep. So the trick here is to first cut off the ends. You don't want anything uneven. And it's sticky, that's totally fine, that's expected. That's why this dough is very wet. And now the goal is to, you're gonna cut this in half and then cut each half into fifths. That's how you get your 10 buns. I recommend a very sharp serrated knife to do this. I know estimating fifths is not um, easy. Okay, now cut side goes down into the pan and you can put sort of your you know more even side up one reason to do that uh aesthetics and cosmetics aside is because they will rise a little bit and they'll absolutely rise in the oven and uh if it's uneven at all it'll actually rise a little bit unevenly and that's how sometimes you get sort of weird looking morning buns but they're still delicious so don't throw any bad cuts out bake them up, see what happens. I'm actually picking between my two sides. I am patting them down just a little bit. Again, they should be tall. If yours are tall, that's great. I recommend if you have ones that are smaller than the others, um, you put those in the center. I have a few that are a little bit smaller and that's just because you know I rolled the dough unevenly or those things happen. 
And now we let them rest. You're gonna cover them um, with grease plastic wrap again. And uh, they rest for an hour and they're gonna rise a little bit. have been uh, resting at room temperature for an hour and they're ready to go straight to the oven. Now this is generally a quick bake. It could, it could be a little slower depending on your oven. I'm going to check them in six minutes and uh, see how they're doing. This can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes usually, but again, if your um, furnace is in a convection oven, it's gonna go a lot quicker than it will in my oven today. So we'll see. What you do wanna prepare on the side while it's baking is a bowl of granulated sugar and some more softened butter. Um, once they bake, we're gonna pull them out. We're gonna lovingly brush them with the butter and then uh, pull them out of their tins and toss them in the granulated sugar and then we'll have the perfect morning bun. This is probably both the best and worst period of waiting because you know that at the end of this, you're gonna have morning buns, but you're still 10 minutes plus probably cooling time away from getting them. I've decided while I'm waiting, I should make some coffee. See that we're a French press household, but there are three other ways to make coffee right beneath you right now. We're a we like options. Coffee water's not boiling, timer's not ready yet. Oh man, we're gonna get through today. I don't have coffee and morning buns already. Oh ho ho. All right. See, some of mine are really wonky. I'm gonna get up there and show you. Some of mine are really wonky. They're not done yet, and some are just gorgeous and huge. And that's okay, it's, it's gonna be wonky, it's gonna be gorgeous. And they're rising really nicely. I'm gonna give it, um, I'm gonna give it seven minutes now. So that's looking really good. I think the one downside to this format has been the inability to communicate live questions, clarifying questions, um, you know, checking in on things as you go. So I hope you still feel free to reach out um, as you're making morning buns with your questions. I, as I go, I try to come up with the questions you might ask along the way, but I'm not always obviously successful at that. Um, it's, I misspeak frequently, especially live, I misspeak frequently. Um, so that's another thing. Hopefully I catch myself today if I misspeak. I'm drinking less coffee right now, which I find interesting because honestly, the business has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for everything. And um, I've been out and about and, you know, in the kitchen a ton. And I'm just, I'm really thankful that uh, people have been sort of transitioning with the business into new areas. As you'll notice, I'm an expert coffee maker. I weigh it out. I weigh the water. I would never grind beans to the coarsest grind. Eyeball it up to a certain point and then just dump boiling water in on top. I'm a professional, so. My husband actually was a barista and so he has his, he has his very specific ways that he likes to, likes to make coffee. Literally watching water boil. <clears throat> Mine are getting nice and golden brown. We're 13 minutes in now. Um, I want it to go a little bit longer. It's too blonde for, for my taste, which means the middle will be on the rarer, the rawer side. So I'm gonna put it in for four more minutes and that's partially delivered because my coffee will be ready in four minutes. All right, four more minutes are up. First off, press the front. Okay, now 
let's check on the buns. Oh, Ooh, look how golden brown they are. Oh my gosh, so we've got a few steps before these are ready. Um, I know, control yourselves. First, take some of that softened butter, lots of softened butter in this, and you're actually just going to whew, spread it on the tops of every single one of these. And it should, it's, you know, the, the buns are really hot, it should just melt right along them. And that sugar and grease in the pans was really important because we are gonna pop them out immediately. I recommend if you have an offset, spatula a small one i recommend using that if not you can just use a knife just be careful okay let's see and they are very hot if someone has a oh gosh i feel like i need to absolutely show you this up close look at that and look at the bottom it's just gorgeous and it's sticky and it should be sticky so take some of that granulated sugar you can do this more than one at a time i think i will and we're just going to toss it in there and you want it fully coated. Why? Let me show you. So that you get this. And it's just that single blueberry in the middle. I'm incredibly pleased. All right, let me finish these up. I don't know if you can see the bottom, just how gooey and wonderful that is. Oh, and it smells heavenly in here right now. Be very careful. Again, these are hot. The blueberries have actually added a lovely touch. I wasn't sure how it would go, but they are um, just adorable. All right, last four. Perfect blueberry morning buns. Oh my gosh, they're just adorable. I, honestly, they, they 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 could be cuter. All right, come here, you. Cheers. I think that's better than I remember, or this is a really good batch, or I need to start selling blueberry morning buns. I don't know. It's so good. I'm actually, I'm like, I'm actually shocked that how it's just silky. It's silky smooth. I've got, let's see if you can see that. I've got a blueberry right there. Oh, it's delicious. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please let me know how it went for you. Let me know what flavor combinations you chose. I want to hear everything. Send me your photos. Um, and tell me if you want to try another sort of long form recipe together. I know this was a little different this week. Uh, you can find all of our products at www.burrpastryshop.com on all the social media. It's at Burr Pastry Shop. That's B-E-U-R-R-E -R -R -E, Pastry Shop. Um, and you can always DM us or contact us through the site. Um, but let us know. I, I always like to feature the items that you guys end up making during our bake along. So I would love to see what you've done this time. Uh, and I'll see you next week.